Hello, Tensor friends. Uh, I asked myself another fundamental question and got, got myself in trouble here, uh, but I got it. And once again, it's surprisingly easy. Just going back to the basics. So I keep using this. I've even used it in my own videos of saying, and therefore it is obvious that a covariant basis vector dotted with a contravariant basis vector is the delta, the Kronecker, the delta, where uh, it's equal to one if i equal j and equal to zero if not. And I just use this. But, and I finally said, well, why is this true? What makes this true? And that just opened a rabbit hole of monumental proportions. <laughs> it involves vector spaces, dual vector spaces, vectors, co-vectors, basis vectors, dual basis vectors. And I just screamed. because. And mathematicians, I'm sorry if this offends you, but the formalism of mathematics drives me insane. I'm a scientist. I want to know how to use it. I don't need to know all that. So I said, okay, I'm, st I'm, I'm not reading that anymore. It's too much. It's over my head. Let's go back to the beginning. What is the metric, the tensor? Okay, this is something we know, we understand, we use it. It is defined as the dot product, the scalar, the product of the basis vectors. Now, you notice these are covariant, the basis vectors, because this index is in the lower position, right? Now, we call this the metric, the tensor, but it's actually the covariant metric, the tensor. Well, that means if there's a covariant metric tensor, there must be a contravariant metric, the tensor. And there is. We call it the inverse metric, the tensor. And it's something else I use all the time without even thinking about it. Because I find this, then I find it's inverse. I don't really think about what it is. What it is is the scalar product of the contravariant basis the vectors that's what it actually is which we we almost never start here and go this direction we start up and go down to here so it's actually the contravariant the metric the tensor so if it's the inverse of the metric the tensor then that must mean that the metric tensor times the inverse must be equal to the Kronecker delta or uh, the identity matrix in this case right so we also learned that we can raise and lower indices by multiplying them times the metric, the tensor. Uh, and I did that uh, in a video not very long ago. I'll reference that in the uh, comment, the section. So we can change a covariant basis vector into a contravariant basis the vector by multiplying it times the components of the metric tensor okay so we we so we prove this to be true and what it means so now let's just manipulate this what if we dotted both sides of this thing here with a covariant basis the vector so we got ei dot ek well, we can now, we can plug this in and say, since EI is equal to G, the super IJ, EJ, we plug that in here, we move our parenthesis around, and we just got through talking about what this is. This is the covariant metric tensor. So we got the contravariant, the metric tensor times the covariant metric tensor has to be equal to the identity matrix or the Kronecker, the delta. <laughs> So a co a contravariant basis vector inner product with a covariant basis the vector gives you the Kronecker delta and it does it through its use of the metric tensor. This is the way I understand it. I'm not saying this is mathematically the way it does it because it has to do with dual co vector whatever. But this is the way now I can understand this. I'm happy with this. It makes sense to me now as to why this is true. And I keep using it without even asking the, the question of why. And I finally did. Anyway, I thought that's fun. I'll see you later.